Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game from round 6 uh, of the currently played Reykjavik Open. It's um, uh, Icelandic Grandmaster Johan Hartarsson versus Hans Moken Niemann. And uh, like I said in the title of the video, it's a funny story, but the funny story is about why I'm actually showing this game. But we're gonna discuss that after uh, I show you the game, so uh, as not to spoil anything. So let's dive into it. It's a pretty short game, so you guys will enjoy it. Uh, Hartarsson has the white pieces and he opens with C4. Uh, he goes not b4 uh, he goes for the english opening we have e5 by neiman going for the king's english variation g3 we have c6 uh, d4 and now uh, as uh, the, the pawn on e5 is challenged we grab more space in the center with e4 uh, knight to c3 now attacking the pawn and the black is very happy to grab more space in the center with the d5 and now usually bishop to g2 is just played here but hartarsson goes for knight to h3 he's saying okay you've advanced this pawn uh, all the way to e4 now i'm going to put my knight to f4 and the only way for you to kick it away is to play some like h5 h6 and g5 or to somehow trade one of your pieces for my knight but this will be an excellent square for the knight so h6 uh we have c captures on d5 c captures and now queen to b3 uh there is a game uh, in the database where knight to e uh, f4 was played uh, right away it's a game between hans tikanen versus nils grandelius from 2013 that ended in a draw but here we have queen to b3 going for a different approach knight to f6 and only now knight to f4 we have knight to c6 e3 now and bishop to b4 now pinning this knight and uh, there uh, is a game uh, where um, uh, a, a move that that isn't the move in this game was played but here we have bishop to d2 and it is now already as of move 10 that we have a completely new game so let's see what happens here bishop captures on c3 so we have a trade bishop for knight bishop captures and now as we said this knight can only be be dislodged by playing h6 and g5 or g5 right away but that seems a bit too sharp g5 chasing away the knight knight the e2 and now uh hunts just castles here uh and uh, here you could consider something like h4 it seems like a good idea you want to open up the h file for your rook the problem is here it would be uh, th there's really no attack here uh, because the pawn on d4 and this pawn on d5 are preventing you from doing any damage with the queen and the bishop and h4 just doesn't do all that much we're gonna play a5 or, or even b5 is possible we could uh, or even developing the bishop we can even give the b7 pawn away let's say a3 and now bishop to g4 it's a very very sharp position but black definitely has the upper hand even if you grab the pawn queen d6 we connect the rooks and black is the one who's attacking here so instead Hjartarsson plays h3 here takes away the g4 square from the uh, from the bishop on c8 and now rook to b8 now we're ready to play b5 a5 b4 and so on so g4 now uh creating some outputs for our knight on e2 we could play knight g3 then maybe knight f5 or knight h5 in the future and b5 by neiman uh, we have queen back to d1 you could also maybe try playing a3 to prevent b4 but uh Hjartarsson even invites b4 now you could consider a5 and then b4 uh neiman goes for b4 right away attacks the bishop back to d2 and now he says all right i also have some very nice outposts here for my for my knight so maybe knight to e7 to g6 and then maybe to h4 then to f3 uh, not much white can do uh, about this uh, so just knight to e7 we have knight to g3 both players just uh, remaneuvering their knights to better outposts uh, knight to g6 and now rook to c1 makes sense this is the only open file on the board so you definitely want your rook on this file knight to h4 now going after that f3 square and of course the bishop p2 we have to guard the f3 square and now uh, there are uh, so many moves you could play here with black because black's position is uh, somewhat better here you could start with a5 just solidifying on the queen side you could start bishop to d7 just connecting your rooks and everything uh, or you could just take away white's castling privileges with knight g2 check king f1 knight back to h4 now uh, what is white going to do about this rook how are you getting it into the game it's not easy for white however in the game queen to b6 was played probably anticipating that white will maybe castle or something like that but uh um, Hjartarsson does no such thing he plays rook to c5 and it's an excellent square for the rook black does not have a dark square bishop and uh, well uh, it will uh, take you some time but also uh, not only is it an excellent outpost for for the rook uh, in the future some ideas like queen to a4 maybe a rook to c6 will come with a double attack on the queen and the knight so there are some things to consider here so bishop to a6 uh, bishop to d7 would have still been better but bishop to a6 really allows white to get back into the game and the black pretty much drops the advantage because now queen to a4 is a must because yes uh, you are uh, going to attack that bishop twice but you will 
also be threatening this rook to c6 idea. So queen to a4. Now black's idea of trading bishops um, uh, has to be played with bishop captures on e2 or maybe even bishop to d3 is possible here. Uh, but then you have to go into this rook c6, attacks the rook and the knight, queen goes back to defend the knight, we're going to play bishop captures on b4 and already white is um, the one who is taking control over the game. So after bishop captures on e2 we have king captures on e2 and now queen to e6 getting the queen away uh, from this double attack uh, but still rook h to c1 doubling up on the c file and now we have rook to b6 not allowing this uh, rook to c6 idea but uh, that's exactly what white plays you can't really stop it because white controls the square three times so rook to c6 now comes queen to d7 and here just b3 asking white what do you do here a b3 is not necessary you could also play knight to h5 which is a which is a quicker way to achieve a victory but uh, it doesn't matter even after b3 uh, sorry even after b3 uh, black does not have all that many options here so rook captures on c6 was played rook captures on c6 now putting pressure on that uh, knight here b3 was played to keep an eye on the queen so we could capture the knight and not hang our queen so queen d8 uh, attacking uh, the knight here but of course there are so many uh, ways to win the game now i'm sure you guys see the cleanest one so feel free to pause the video here and win the game for white uh, while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on spotting this brilliancy. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop captures on b4. Uh, or you could go queen captures on a7 or queen to a6. White position is so much better that pretty much any move wins. Uh, but bishop captures on b4 is just resigns on the spot. Uh, and that's exactly what happened here after bishop captures on b4. Uh, it was in this position that Hans Mokeniemann resigned the game uh, because your rook is hanging and there's no way to defend it. Once you move the rook, now white captures on f6 and that's it queen captures we, we pick up a free rook white is up a piece of course the position is completely winning so after bishop b4 uh Niemann resigned and a uh, brilliant brilliant victory only 27 moves for johan hartarsson uh, icelandic grandmaster uh, so while well, uh, this game is very very impressive and a very short one uh, I mentioned that it's a funny sh uh, funny story why I'm even showing it uh, a, a, a large chess website posted on Twitter uh, that shall not be named uh, posted that uh, a brilliant brilliant game was played in round 6 of the Icelandic, uh, Icelandic Open Tournament and I immediately it got my attention I started analyzing it and I was like okay it's a pretty pretty great game but uh, nothing that they've mentioned that happens in that game actually happened happened in this game so uh, they uh, misposted they said that it, that it happened in round six whereas the game that they were talking about happened in round four so I already analyzed the game from round six and it was a very, very nice one you can see there was a very clean win so I decided to show both of them uh, so the uh, round, uh, the game from round four will be shown in a video after this video. So you guys will be treated to two very nice videos. Uh, interestingly, both played by uh, a, a very strong Icelandic grandmaster, uh, Johan Hartarsson. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's uh, one of the weirder reasons why I've shown a game uh, since I've started my channel. But uh, you know, it's uh, always nice when things work out, as it's 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 a wonderful game. Uh, I would like to thank uh, US uh, FDEFRE, uh, Elias Fine, Leonel Alexandrino, Harish Srinivasan, and that dude LB for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, with the other game that I've mentioned where something truly spectacular happens. So stay tuned for that. It should be uh, published maybe an hour after this game is published. Uh, so yeah, once again, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and have an excellent rest of your day.